Okay, it's time to put this GP38-2 by Lifelight back together. As you can see, we have got our motor parts. We have got the gears. There is the housing for the motor. Um, what I've done is I have taken the underframe outside and sprayed some Rust-Oleum dark brown camouflage on the fuel tank. I really like that effect and later when I go to detail this, uh, this dark brown camouflage paint really takes things like dry brushing and adding maybe some oil spots or something. It takes it really well. I did not do the rest of the frame. We'll get to this part in a minute. Um, I did the side frames the same. They are also dark brown camouflage. According to my own library, this color is as close to everything I have ever taken a picture of. And, it's a, and I like using it that way. Um, I think the black is much too stark. And I also, as I said before, you see a lot of dry brushed white dust. I can't find pictures in my library where that is the case, where there's a bunch of white dust. And it may be just the pictures I've taken, maybe regional or something, but I'm not going to be putting a bunch of dust on here. The side frames are ready. Okay. And it take, I took it outside in the sunlight, and it took all of five minutes for it to dry. That stuff dries really fast. It's You can handle it almost immediately. Um, in, in the sun, in the warm. I'm going to give you another tip. Your spray can of <clears throat> Rust-Oleum, set it in the sun, let it get nice and hot. Spray is much easier. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to prepare the wheel sets. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this metallic gunmetal gray paint came from Walmart. It was like 75 cents. And I found, it's, it's, it's an acrylic, that it, it's pretty good stuff. I use it for dry brushing, but I'm going to show you a little thing. I pour a dot on a paper towel, and I've got here water, and I've got 91% alcohol. And I'm going to take a little bit on my brush, which is, I just cleaned it. It's got a little alcohol on it. I cleaned it, and I'm just going to get a little bit on a round tip brush. Okay, and all I want to do, I've already got new traction tires on here. I'm not going to show you how to replace traction tires. Those are in a different video, but they're basically black rubber bands. Get them on, I get them on eBay. They're really cheap. They're super easy. I've actually seen them in some hobby stores. There are two kinds, the black rubber bands and the clear ones. Um, I found that the clear ones, they don't last as long as the black ones, but either way, they wear out, they dry rot. They get crappy. You take your exacto knife, you cut them off, and you put on another one. This one's already starting. It's got a little bit of cracks in it, but it'll last a while. I can replace it anytime I want. But what I want to do is I want to take this and I want to get it on the wheel. And a lot of people like to use rust for this, but since my side frames are already the brown color. I just want to get this on here. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't even have to be all the way in there. It'll make a nice little effect behind the side frame. And this slippery plastic, it's a little tough to get on here. I don't have to make it perfect. If you can see if I'm getting a good focus, I just dabbed it on. That's all I want to do. This is going to be dry in a little bit. It'll be dry just in time to do to put this back together. So I'm going to get that on there. Just dab it on. It'll be good to go. Okay, I don't want to get it on, on the treads. Maybe these. See, these are behind the side frames. And they're, it's a bit shiny when it dries, which is okay. What you will... The dark brown will cast a shadow against it, and it'll get 
gives it kind of a cool effect. Now if you're doing prototype modeling, you're going to probably do a couple of different layers of stuff. But we're just trying to make this thing at arm's length. Just give it a, a cool effect. Here's the pickup wheels. Now, these, I'm going to do the same thing just inside here because I am going to do something else to these wheels as soon as it dries, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, I'm just going to get it inside here on the, on the little edge. These are definitely what you call pizza cutter wheels. If you are using code 83, they are probably too big. I use code 100 um, just from because I like more reliability. Um, it's much more forgiving than code 83. And I'm not a prototype modeler, so I'm, I want trains to run. I want them to run better than not really doing a bunch of uh, prototype scenes. If I do some prototype scenes, I will uh, I'll add in a section of, of code 83 somewhere just for that purpose. Okay, that takes care of the wheel sets. Let's clean this brush. A little alcohol cleans it right up. Okay. Alright, let's I didn't even need the water. Sometimes you need it. So I always have it. Now that we have done that part, we will move on to the reassembly of the pancake motor. Yes, this is that dreaded pancake motor that everyone tells you to junk it. There ain't nothing wrong with it. So, what I want to do, what I want to do first, if you remember these tabs and little solder points on them, I'm going to take my Dremel tool and I'm going to clean the inside of them. Now, if you're doing this, have a good grip on it. I probably should be using the pliers because your Dremel tool will throw this and it will fly away and never be seen again. I marked that one red for front. It's going to give a clean up. The back side is the most important spot to clean. That is where contact is made. That's those two. Now we're going to use the magic stuff, the ox guard. We're going to get a dab out of here. We're going to put it on the inside of these. Just like that. It will form a film when it when it dries. It takes quite a while for this to form the film. Um, and that film is good. I have not cleaned this workbench track for, I don't know, more than 18 months. Because it's all ox guarded. So, and it, and it works just fine. Ox guard does wonders, especially on brass track. We'll make some brass track in another video. We'll make it look really nice. And we'll use the ox guard so it works forever. Okay, next. Let's take a little screwdriver. And prepare this section with the ox guard. The parts in front I want to ox guard are these two sockets. In there goes the phosphor bronze spring and the brush. And I just want to get enough in there. What I don't want to do... Generally, you do not ox guard your core or the little tiny uh, pieces of graphite, the brushes. I'm just going to put some in here. It will get on the phosphor bronze spring. Just like that. Okay, that guy's ready. Now, what's next? Next, let's do a little reassembly. Okay. So, got the part with the magnets. The core, which I cleaned up earlier, needs... Uh-oh, where'd it go? There it is. We need something. 
Here is a secret. Here is a secret. Secret recipe. I'm going to put some mystery oil. Take my uh, screwdriver. Okay. Put a dot on the end of my screwdriver. A dot. I said a dot. I want a, there's a thrust washer here. It's this little plastic thing. I want to get a dot onto this shaft that goes in. There we go. There's a dot on there. That part fits into that middle phosphor bronze bushing. And there we go. Now, if you have a big fan in your house that runs a lot, you can actually take it apart and you can do the same thing. You can put a dot on the bushing. There's another one on the other side by this gear. Just a dot. Like that. There it is. There's a dot on there. Just a dot. It's all we need. We don't want it spreading. We want a dot of oil on there. All right. Core is ready. Gears. So, where's our... We're going to go ahead and take these posts. Put them back in. There's one. Get yourself a tweezers. Learn how to use it. You know, once you once you learn how to use your tweezers, it makes life a lot easier. Remember what I said about everybody goes down? Okay. That means on this gear, the small gear on the inside goes down. Let's see if I put these in in the right order. Alright, I screwed up already, didn't I? Maybe, maybe not. Everybody goes down. Little ones. Keep an eye. Uh, these two are slightly smaller than these two. Everybody goes down. Okay, I screwed up again. We'll get it. We'll get it until it works. I had it right the first time. Down. Down. Okay, the inside of these goes to the wheel. The big part goes to the little part on the little ones. Everybody goes down and down again. Should look like this. Turns nicely. Okay, and the big one will go here. And there it is. Okay, there it is. Back together. And when this is in here, it'll turn, and it'll turn all those. Okay. Now, now that it is in here, I'm going to grease it. I use this. Looks like that. This one can has lasted me exactly 30 years. I bought this at an auto parts store 30 years ago, and I've used it on every locomotive I've built in all those years and this is how much I've used and I've used on everything here's the thing the locomotives that I did with this way back when I open them now to rebuild them again and get them back into service they are still good to go with this red lithium so I take a dot and put it on my screwdriver little glob and I'm going to get it on these gears and work it in there this is where a lot of people use the label that I don't really like for this purpose because 30 years later it um, has turned to amber and I don't like that. Um, but that label grease, that is good stuff and there's a lot of uses for it. Um, but for a locomotive that might now sit for decades, it's not good for that. I don't like it for that purpose. So let's work in some grease on these guys. Just work it around the gears. Good to go. Work it on these guys. Oh. Put them back together. Oh, right. put them back together. Alright, for those of you... Oh. What did I say? Get a tweezers, learn how to use it. Oh, look at that. Oh!
try that again. Get a tweezers, right? Learn how to use it. Put that guy in there. Hold him down in there. Take the little guy and put him in here. And all better now. Look at that. Okay, now let's work this guy around. Yes, there we go. And we don't need a lot. We just see a little red outline on our gears. Okay, this is the part where a lot of you find that some of these plastic gears have cracked. And that is what happens to them. There's not... Now, I have another video about re repairing those cracked gears. Two ways to do it. One is repair it using the baking soda super glue trick. The other place you find those cracked gears is on these guys right here. You'll find a crack in these. The baking soda super glue method will repair it. It will. Now, you could end up with a hard spot on your gear that makes a crackling noise. Very carefully, using these little needle files, you get rid of that. That is, if you cannot get a replacement, that is how you do it. Let's see, did I get enough? Let's get one more dab on this brass gear. These, the brass gears can, if they are wobble, they can and they will eat plastic gears. That is a very big problem in steam locomotives, is that the metal gear eats part of the idler gear off. And years ago I discovered a way of, of wrapping tin foil around a plastic gear like this in a steam locomotive and then greasing it so it could not get worn down again. I was able to repair a, an idler gear which was specially made for that steam locomotive. These gears right here are not special. They aren't. You know where you can find them? Go to your RC store that has drone parts. Take your gear. Have the guy match it. Okay. These shafts are not special. The, the gears are not special. Um, they're common. I bought grab bags of, 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 of project gears on eBay for like two bucks. And sure enough in there, you will, even in the random bags, you will often find these little gears. They're already there. And you can replace them. So there is no such thing as cannot be fixed. There just isn't. Something can always be fixed. All right, next. We are ready to go ahead. Take care. Oh yeah, by the way, I, I washed all of these and washed the old grease out of them using first I degreased it in a little tiny cup using some purple power. I let it soak for five minutes. Then I took a very soft toothbrush and some dish soap and some water and I cleaned out everything in here then I have a spot where there's a little table and there's a big fan about two feet away blowing air on it and I let them sit there for while I was doing something else and then that totally dries them out okay now I'm gonna oh what did we forget what did we forget we have a little grease on here but we're gonna put a tiny dot Tiny dot on the end of my screwdriver in this bushing, this phosphor bronze bushing right there. Okay, there it is. That's it. I don't want the mystery oil spreading throughout the locomotive, and it won't. It'll, it'll do its job right there. And by oiling these bushings, you will tremendously improve the motor. Now if we get it lined up right. And carefully squeeze it back together. Oh, look at that. It's in there. Oh my goodness. Does it turn? Yes, it does. And that is all the grease that we need in there. We don't need more than that. Okay, now what do we got to do? Okay, here comes the part that we all fear the most. Now if we remember right, the front one will be the red, but it doesn't matter right now. Let's just get this stuff in here. So, 
this is a very high risk operation. We need to take the brush, drop it into the hole with our tweezers very carefully. Brushes in there. We need to take one of these and the way they fit the side that I ox guarded, the little indentation, will cover this hole. And I've got a screw here. Screw, cover. There's a screwdriver for that. Where did he go? He's marked with the red dot on him. Aha. Okay, got my tiny Phelps. Alright. Alright. One brush in. We carefully take the spring without squeezing it too hard and wrecking it and without squeezing it so hard I'm going to get it in the hole in the end like this. I want to place it carefully on top of the brush. Carefully. Carefully on top of the brush. Now I want to take the cover carefully with the ox guard part. Wait, I forgot one thing. The back side of the brush. Before I put this in here, back side of the spring, anyways. I'm going to touch it to the ox guard spot and get a little bit of ox guard on it. Okay, now I'm going to put it down in there. Okay. Now I'm going to carefully press my finger down over it. I got the spring in there. Whew, there it is, it's in there. All right. Let's take a screw with the tweezers. Get it in there. I'm holding it. Let go of this thing and that spring goes flying away. This operation will be over before it begins. Down we go. That's one. One done. Next. I'm going to do it again. Okay. Let's take the brush. The little piece of graphite down into its socket. There we go. Next. Got the cover. I'm going to take the spring into my tweezers so it doesn't go flying away. Ox guard it on the downside. Drop it in the hole just like that. Let's get my screw ready. Screw's ready. Screwdriver ready. Cover. Very carefully, I'm going to press down on the spring without losing it. It is in the spot. And the ox guard is on top of the spring. All right, now let's take this screw. Get him in the spot. Oh, yep. It's magnetic. which is both good and bad. Good, things don't run away. All right, it's in there. Bad, it tends to pull your stuff out of the way. All right, here we go. Screw going in. Spring is in place. Motor is assembled. Okay, let's put in the two retaining screws with our tweezers. Let's not use our fingers, let's use our tweezers. And notice I've got the, the little shop towel here. Sure does help a lot to keep parts where they don't get away from you. And holy cow. Did we get it? Do we have it? Do we have it? Pancake motor rebuilt. Now let's let's make sure. So, what do I got here? A couple alligator clips somewhere. Yeah, I do. And I've got a power pack under here. I'm going to attach red to this one. I'm going to attach black to this one. Let's see if I can do this without them, without these two guys touching each other. They like to touch each other. And then short things out. See that? 
All right, they're on there. Let's turn them on. Power on. Oh, holy. Does that sound like a working motor? Very slow right there. Work that grease in. Swiss direction. Okay, we're going to do one more test. One more quick test. What are we going to test? Test the wheels. You test the wheels. Question is now, which way? Okay, let's snap them in there. Same with the wheels. Everybody goes down. How do you know which side the wheel goes? Because it has little extra on one side and everybody goes down so everybody in the box everybody is down right everybody's down okay let's put the side frame on how do we know which way it goes on the big tab goes to the big socket All right. there we go okay now we have a side frame on the truck does it work? The moment of truth. This is what's cool about pancake motors, is testing them on your bench. You know, this is like working on an old car. That's basically what it is. This was some kid's Christmas present, way back when. Okay, let's hit it. I see wheels turning. Wheels are turning. Pancake motor rebuild is a big success. Very big success. Okay, the thing that irritates people most about these is just their sound. Um, but that's just the way it is. Okay, so you can sort of see that silver on the wheels in there. When it's on the track at standoff distance, it does not look too bad. Looks pretty good. And this mission is complete. That is how you do it. Should you run into cracked gears, do not panic. Do not panic. Stay calm so you can fix it. All right, we'll be moving on to the frame next.